Hey guys, so I've been thinking about doing a room tour or a collection video for some time now, but I haven't thought of the best way to do it because my games and consoles are kind of all over the place. So most of my NES and Genesis and Super Nintendo and Famicom and Master System games, they're all on a nice little shelf right over here in this room. But when it comes to things like Intellivision, Vectrex, Atari, Odyssey 2 games, etc. Those are all either in my game closet or they're like on a shelf in a different room or in a box. Like I just have stuff everywhere. So because of this, I thought I would do something a little bit more interesting and start a series called Aaron Show and Tell Saturdays. So every once in a while, I'm going to be showing you guys pieces from my collection. This could be anything from games, consoles, gaming accessories, collectibles, Anything that I think is cool that is worth showing off. Okay, so first up, I wanted to talk to you guys about Samurai Pizza Cats on the Famicom. Now, I don't know the actual title because I don't speak Japanese. But obviously, these are the Samurai Pizza Cats, and I used to watch this cartoon when it was on UPN when I was a kid. I think it came on after Sailor Moon. Um, and I wouldn't be able to finish the episodes because I would have to go to school, but I don't know, I always liked it. I liked the theme song. And so when I found out there was a game, I freaked out and I impulse bought it on eBay. And then I put it in and I realized, oh, like you kind of have to read to play it and it's in Japanese, so that's kind of a problem. So when I first played this, I totally got stuck because I didn't know that you're supposed to switch between different cats in the middle of the game. I thought it was like you pick one cat per level or one cat and you just have to stick with that one. I didn't know. You just have to switch between the, all the cats because they all have different abilities. So I eventually got through level one and I was like, okay, this game's pretty good. So one cat uses, I think, a boomerang, one can fly, one blows stuff up. So for example, where I got stuck, you had to go through a wall and I didn't know you could switch cats. So then I switched to the cat that could blow stuff up and then we got through the wall. So I totally recommend this game if you were like me and used to watch the cartoon as a kid and you want a decent Famicom platformer, then check it out. So this is probably one of the coolest things, at least I think so, that I own. So this is a Vectrex carrying case. These are very rare. Um, this is intended for you to put your Vectrex inside along with the games. There's little um, pockets for games right here. See, they like kind of just fit in like that. You can also fit, you know, there's even like a side, if you want like a boxed game, you can just stick that in there. These don't really come up on eBay that often. So my friend Jose knew I was looking for one and then he randomly stumbled upon it and texted me like, Aaron, there's a Vectrex carrying case on eBay. And I was like, oh shit. And then I thought about it for like five minutes. I'm like, do I do it? Do I do it? And then I just bought it. And I'm really glad I did because I don't know. I just think it looks cool. I love the Vectrex so much so. Like, if I'm gonna buy something super collectory for a system, it would be the Vectrex. So up next we have Sailor Moon on the Game Gear. Now, what's special about this one is that I'm pretty sure it's the only side-scrolling Sailor Moon game there is out there, because most of them are fighters, you know, brawlers, there's a puzzle game, and an RPG, but I'm pretty sure this is the only side-scrolling Sailor Moon game that exists. If I'm wrong, you know, totally let me know because I would love to find another one because this one's not that good. It's the same music the whole way through, the jumping's really awkward, and it doesn't really make any sense. It's like someone made this game that had no idea what Sailor Moon was about. So as you go, you see floating circus tents behind you, you're walking on beams, bricks are falling from the ceiling, and then you fight a lady that's like dressed like a cat with polka dots. Like it's pretty out of control. Okay, so this next one I find pretty interesting because I had no idea it existed and I just randomly discovered it. It's called Puss in Boots. So first I thought it was interesting because it was put out by Toei, Toei Animation. And that little cat, it's like, I remember that being um, on the back of a lot of Sailor Moon toys I would get when I was little and Dragon Ball Z and stuff like that. And so it turns out they took their mascot and put him in a game, unless I'm understanding it wrong. But anyway, it's really cute. 
You're playing as a cat in boots, cause you're a puss in boots. And you're kind of just running through saloons and stuff, but not even in the saloon, you're just walking by everything. Then it's really kind of generic and boring. But then you get to the boss, and it's this giant mechanical frog that almost looks like something out of Mega Man. One thing I do have to say is that there's a lot of variety in this game. So, you know, the first stage you're walking, I think it's the second stage you're in a boat, and then you encounter bouncing pirate ships and lightning bolts and all kinds of stuff. And then you're in a car that kind of reminds me of a mashup of Felix the Cat on NES and Moon Patrol on Atari. It's a weird game because I can't decide if I think it's boring or fun, but I just thought I would talk about it because I've never heard anyone talk about it. And people need to talk about Puss in Boots. Um, I think some of the power-ups were funny. All I remember is a cheeseburger. And then sometimes little Puss in Boot heads appear. And I think I even saw a boot. I don't know. But also, I think it's really funny that the game starts off with like an image of a gun on the bottom. Because, you know, you can use a gun as a weapon, but it's just funny seeing like this really cute cartoon cat and then looking down on the bottom of the screen and seeing this like outline of a realistic looking gun. I don't know. It's just funny because that would never happen today. And the next thing I want to talk about is this Toro RGB VGA SCART box for your Dreamcast. And it's pretty great for upscaling your Dreamcast games. You can change between RGB and VGA. You can also mess with the scan lines. I don't really do that, but the option is there if you're into that. So all you do is you take this, you take your SCART cable, put it in there, if I can get the angle right. And I like that it's clear blue. Doesn't that look good? <laughs> you know, and then this goes into your SCART switcher, which goes into your Frame Meister or whatever, and you're good to go. Okay, so one thing that I think is a little bit awkward, I'm gonna explain this horribly because I'm not a technical person. Um, so this part that goes into here, and then this part goes into your Dreamcast, so it's like that. This easily gets kind of knocked around so I feel like if I'm streaming or something, I could easily like just move the system on accident and then it could potentially, you know, just stop the game or screw something up. But other than that, I think it's great. I totally recommend it. So I tried this out with Mr. Driller, which turns out to be a really fun game. It's highly addictive. It's kind of like if Tetris had a baby with Dig Dug and it was a really cute baby that was a video game. That would be Mr. Driller. So I want to play that more, but whatever. It's about the Toro. The Toro is great for Dreamcast upscaling, and I just wanted to show you this because it's cool. And I want to do more Dreamcast stuff on my channel. And lastly, we have Diner on Intellivision. So this is an Intellivision game that I've been wanting to own for a very long time, and I'm very happy I finally own it. It's the follow-up to Burger Time. As you can tell on the box, it says, the Burger Time gang is back. And you see the little sausage hot dog wiener dudes and you got heads of lettuce and root beers. Like, this feels very burger time and I like it. <laughs> but what's interesting about Diner is that instead of just going up and down ladders, you're in a 3D environment and you're kicking the heads of lettuce that look like bowling balls and you can use them to run into enemies. So far I've only noticed the only enemies are the hot dogs and the root beers. And I'm pretty sure that's it. But anyway, you kick the lettuce heads into them and then in the end you have to get them down to the bottom. Almost like a goal, like it's kind of like soccer. It's really weird and hard to explain, but I like it. I think it's cool. I wasn't expecting it to have that 3D kind of look. I don't really know what I was expecting. When it comes to the controls, like a lot of Intellivision games, it's kind of awkward at first to get the hang of everything. But once you do, it's definitely playable and it's fun. Um, I would recommend it if you like Burger Time and you like it enough to want to know what came after Burger Time and want to see what else is in the Burger Time extended universe, the BT you, if you will, <laughs> then I would definitely recommend checking it out. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that first little peek into my game collection. If there's anything else you guys would like to see specifically, please let me know in the comments. And thank you for watching.